Personally, I didn't mind Pilot being revealed as a new fighter to join Smash, but I can't say I was excited about it either. Every other DLC fighter has been a third party character no one imagined to ever join Smash's roster. It gave players hope that with each new reveal, it would be even more grand than the last. But this last reveal was a bit underwhelming. From fan favorite characters we never saw coming, to a character the game already has enough of. Is this how Nintendo concludes their first fighter pass? A character from a game that hasn't even been out for an entire year? One that not many players have even gotten a chance to get to know? Just another fighter from a series Smash has already represented more than enough? Luckily there will be a total of 6 new DLC fighters in the upcoming fighter pass, so hopefully Nintendo can make up for the ones fans felt like should have been included. But is the hate Nintendo is currently receiving about Byleth warranted? I feel like there's two sides to this coin. Obviously Nintendo doesn't deserve hate for doing this, but being upset about it is understandable. For example, I've been wanting Rex to join Smash's roster since Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was released. The game came out an entire year before Smash Ultimate was released, so I had full hopes that he would find his way into the game. And leading up to the game's release, during a Smash Direct just one month prior to it being released, Nintendo announced that Rex would be featured in the game, but as a me outfit. He would be a bonus to those who purchased the Fighter Pass DLC, as Nintendo claimed that the entire roster of fighters, which would then mean including the DLC fighters, were already confirmed before Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was even released. And at first this did make sense, as all other fighters revealed in the DLC were in games that were released before Smash Ultimate, until the final fighter, which was Byleth. Fire Emblem Three Houses, which is the game Byleth is from, wasn't even released a year ago. It came out far after Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and even Smash Ultimate. Hell, the game was released almost halfway into the other DLC characters being revealed. So how does a character that couldn't have been confirmed as a fighter somehow make its way as the fifth slot when Rex, a character from a game released before Smash Ultimate, wasn't, as Byleth from a game that was released even after the Fighter Pass was announced somehow made its way in. And this is completely unfair to Xenoblade fans, as Byleth clearly didn't deserve a spot over Rex, or really any other character fans requested. Byleth is from a game that isn't even a year old, how can this compare to characters like Banjo-Kazooie or Joker? And on top of that, Byleth was another Fire Emblem character, which is now the most featured series of fighters in Smash Bros Ultimate. Pretty much amounting to the cast of Mario characters that are featured within the game. Yet even with the Mario fighters, they don't have as many clones as the Fire Emblem characters, which are almost all alike outside of Corrin and now Byleth. It honestly would have been nice to have another Xenoblade character to represent the series along with Shulk, not another Fire Emblem character. So did Sakurai play favorites with Byleth and chose a game he is clearly passionate about to be featured rather than a fan requested one? I feel like instead of listening to the fans they're making it for, Nintendo used this last DLC fighter as a promotion for Fire Emblem Three Houses. As another wave of DLC for that game was even announced the same day of Byleth's reveal. And with Sakurai clearly showing an interest in the series, the decision for Byleth to join Smash seemed like more of a personal choice and marketing scheme for Nintendo. The Smash series is known to do incredibly well for any character it features, boosting their popularity even more than they already is. So it would make sense in why Nintendo would consider choosing a character featured in their own games. Especially from a game that is somewhat new and still has DLC on its way. Which is a huge shame for Xenoblade fans, because it's also a Nintendo IP that deserves that kind of attention. While I do give Nintendo credit for addressing the crazy amount of sword fighters in the game, it shows a bit of bias on how they ignored the criticism of too many Fire Emblem characters within the game. Granted, Rex would have also been another sword fighter, but they could have gone that same route by giving Rex a different kit that didn't just revolve around sword play. As in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, there are tons of different blades with unique weapons and magic that would have diversified his kit from the rest. 
So it really seems like Nintendo didn't want to listen to their fans for this choice. It was more of a marketing choice. And while I don't agree with fans disliking all sorts of Fire Emblem content from Nintendo because of this decision, I do understand why fans are upset. We didn't need a character people barely got a chance to know. A character with no personality and is based around the player's choice. A character from a series that is already well represented in the Smash roster. Violet didn't seem like any of the other previous DLC fighters revealed, and fans saw through it. This wasn't for the fans, but for Nintendo's wallets. And that's why I understand the outrage of fans over this. They aren't overreacting, they just expected more from Nintendo. But again, hopefully Nintendo can redeem themselves with the next Fighter Pass, and hopefully Rex can be more than just a Mii Fighter. Personally, I would love to see a bunch more third-party characters join the roster, to have more IPs represented in Smash. Let's hope Nintendo hasn't lost a need to go above and beyond to make fans happy over maximizing on marketing. Either way, with each and every third-party edition, it will open the door of fans of those characters to consider playing Smash just for that character. Making Smash Bros. to continue being the ultimate game crossover of all games not the ultimate Fire Emblem crossover. I feel like if they saved Byleth for the second Fighter Pass, it would have given fans a chance to get to know this character more and have Fire Emblem be out longer, and maybe they could have actually ended off with a more requested character for that final fighter. And speaking of the second Fighter Pass, what are your hopes for this upcoming pass? Outside of Violet's female version, there has been a total lack of female DLC characters, so hopefully with the second pass, we'll get some of them. And actually, if you want to see which characters I'd love to see join the Smash roster, check out my top 5 video about it, link in the description. Anyways, that about does it for this video, thank you all so much for watching, be sure to leave a like on it if you enjoyed, and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And I want to give a special thanks to my wife Sasa for the thumbnail art. Also, please consider supporting me on Patreon if you want to support the channel for more videos like this. As always, I've been Zelda Master, and I'll see you all in the next one.